Hello, students. Uh, today's session we will see number of questions uh, in Form 2 Nectar 2018. And we're going to go straight forward uh, to the screen of our questions. Uh, the paper we are using, you know, uh, is not very bright anyway, but I hope uh, you can read, uh, of course, through uh, our screen here. So today's discussion, uh, mainly we are going to focus, as we said, we are going to focus uh, in Form 2, uh, 2018, the exam again, consisted of 10 uh, compulsory questions. And uh, we were supposed definitely to show clearly all our workings and other rules remain as the year. So uh, dear students, we can go straight now to questions. So question number one, uh, question number one A, Bloco is cut into two eco units of 10 gram, 20 gram, uh, 35 gram. Use prime factorization method to find the smallest possible mass of the block uh, from which the pieces can be cut. So we are looking for LOCM of 10 gram, 20 gram, and 35 gram. There is no need to write a unit first. So we focus in these numbers 20. You have uh, 10, 20, 35. So by prime factorization, we are going to start there by 2. It is 5, 10, 35. By 2 again, it is 5, 5, 35. We go now by 5, it will be 1, 1, 7. And by 7, to be one, one, one. So the smallest possible mass, uh, possible mass, smallest possible mass, I'm going to say possible, uh, smallest possible mass. We are going to take a product of these prime factors, two times two times five times seven, two times five, sorry. We're going to take two, times two times five times seven. So two times five, which is 10, 10 times 14, 140. So it is 140 gram, okay? So that is uh, the smallest uh, mass uh, of the cube of the block uh, given the students. Question 1B, evaluate 0 0.864 uh, plus, no, no, divide by 0 0.0246, giving your answers correctly uh, to two significant figures. So we're going to take uh, 0 0.864 divided by 0 0.0246. Uh, when we divide by uh, 0 0.0246, we can remove decimal places. And because we have four decimal places, we can multiply by a thousand both sides. Multiply here by actually not a thousand, by, by 10,000. And here again by 10,000. And eventually we are going to have now 8640 divided by 246. So 246, uh, we divided now, we are going to divide uh, straight forward. We are going to divide, you're going to take 8640, you're going to divide by 246. So when we divide this number, uh, actually we are going to get 35.12. Uh, nine five, it goes like that. But we're supposed to give the answer correctly to two significant figures. So, 
uh, you know how significant figures are, and the answer is going to be only 35. So our final answer is 35. We go to next question. The next question says, uh, find out which of the two fractions, five over seven or six over nine, which one is greater? So you have five over seven and you have 60 over nine. The easiest way to attempt this question is to find the LCM of denominators for our case seven and nine. And we know that LCM of nine and seven is 63. So we are going to multiply each of these two numbers by 63 and let us see the results. So taking five over seven times 63 to simplify by seven one by seven nine, you get 45. And when you take 60 over 9 times 63 by 9, 1 by 9 here, 7, we are getting 42, meaning that uh, we can conclude here that actually 5 over 7 is greater than uh, 60 over 9. Clear? I think. I hope it is clear to you. The next question. The next question, uh, which is question uh, 2B, dear friends. Question 2B, we were told if 0 0.125 of all students in, in a mixed class are girls, what percentage of the students are boys? Wow. So we were told that 0 0.125 of all students uh, in a mixed class are girls, what are the percentage of the boys? So percentage of girls, uh, we are going to take 0 0.125 multiply by 100%, you are going to get 12.5%, okay? So to get the percentage of boys, percentage of boys will be 100% minus 12.5%, you are getting 87.5%. So percentage of boys, dear uh, students, is 87.5. The next question, that is question number three, we are supposed to subtract. So we have meters, uh, decimeters, centimeter, and millimeter. Uh, the important thing in this question, remember, uh, you have to know the relationship between uh, centimeter and millimeters. We know that uh, one centimeter equals to uh, 10 millimeter. Uh, forgive my handwriting. Uh, let me arrange it a little bit. So we can say that one centimeter equals to 10 millimeter. One decimeter equals to 10 centimeter. One meter equals to 10 decimeter. Okay. So two minus nine, we are going to borrow 10 from centimeter. So it'll be 12 minus nine, you are going to get three. Here we have now 31. So we are going to have 30. So zero minus uh, eight, of course, you are going to borrow one, you are going to have now 10 minus eight, which is two. Here remain the one, remain the two, you are going to borrow actually one from uh, the scimitars. So will be now uh, 12 minus three, you're going to get nine. And we have eight minus nine, so I'm going to borrow, it will be 18 minus nine, which will be nine also. And you have 
9 here minus 8, which is 1, dear friends. So actually the answer is 1 meter. We have 9 decimeter. We have 92 centimeter and 3 millimeters. That is our answer, dear friends. We got to be find the simple interest of a uh, 10 million invested for five years at the rate of 60% per annum. So we were given principal, it is 10 million. That is the principal 10 million. Principal, it is 10 million. Okay. And we were given a rate. Rate is 60%. We're given number of years is five years. We are looking for simple interest. And we know that simple interest, you just take PRT over 100. So I simple interest, it is 10 million times rate, which is 60 over 100 times number of years, which is five. So simple interest, uh, dear friends, be 10 million times 6 times 5 divided by 100 we are getting 3 million so the interest is 3 million so that is a required simple interest we go to question number 4 uh, in question number four, you are supposed to calculate the size of angle X and Y. And we were given the diagram. And actually in this diagram, we have parallel lines. Because we have parallel lines, uh, so X is going to be equal to 40. And the reason you know that these are alternate angles. But also X plus Y is expected to be 180 degree because uh, X and Y are angles in a straight line. So we know X it is 40, so 40 degree plus Y degree equals to 180 degree. Y will be 180 minus 40. So the value of Y, dear friends, is 140 degree. So as you have seen, the value of Y is 140 and the value of x is 40 degree. Okay. We go to question number 4b. Find the perimeter of a right angle the triangle whose base is 4 minus root 2 and height is 4 plus root 2. Wow. We are looking for a perimeter of right angle the triangle. So we can visualize the right angle, the triangle. There it is. Whose base? So the base is 4 minus root 2. And the height is 4 plus root 2. So first of all, we have to find a C, which is our hypotenuse side. So by using Pythagoras theorem, if here is A and here is B, we know that a square plus b square equals to c square. So I'm going to take 4 plus root 2 square plus 4 minus root 2 square equals to c square. We are going to expand. Expanding 4 plus root 2, it is 16. It is 16 plus... Uh, 8 root 2 plus 2 plus 16 uh, minus 8 root 2 plus 2. Okay. 
equals to c square. So this one can be cancelled. And so the result is c square equals to 16 plus 16, you are getting 32, 32 plus 40, 36, uh, meaning that c equals to 6c. Okay? That is the value of c equals to 60, 60, sorry. And we are looking for perimeters. We know that c has to be a positive number, of course, because we are talking of size. So perimeter, perimeter equals to A plus B plus C, which is equal to 60 plus 4 plus the root 2. Sorry, let me change it. Equals to uh, 4 plus the root 2 plus 4 minus the root 2 plus 6. So root 2, root 2, they're going to go, you have 4 plus 4, 8, 8 plus 4, 14 centimeter. That is, that is the perimeter uh, required. The next question, uh, this is question number five. Solve a uh, simultaneous equation by elimination method. Oh, very good. So solution, we are going to rearrange the question will be 2x plus y equals to 20. And I'm going to take now it is x plus 3y equals to 35. Because we are going to solve by elimination method, so we make sure that either x in one equation are going to be the same as x uh, in the other equation. So we are going to multiply for example i'm going to multiply uh, here by two and here by one so if we do that we are going to get two x plus y equals to 20. the next equation is two x plus six y equals to 70. now we can eliminate the value of x we can eliminate x of course and the result will be y minus six y it is negative 5y equals to negative 50. You divide it by negative 5, negative 5. The value of y will be equal to 10. And because uh, this was by elimination method, so I can substitute the value of y now in any equation. Uh, I can say from equation 1, if we are going for this equation one and equation two, like that. So 2x plus y, which is 10, equals to 20. Uh, 2x equals to 20 minus 10. 2x equals to 10, meaning that x will be 10 divided by 2 equals to 5. So x comma y equals to 5. 10. That is the final solution. X comma y equals to 5 comma 10. And this is, was question number 5a. So 5b, what about 5b? 5b, you were given uh, 4 in the bracket p plus 1 and 1 minus p equals to 3. So we know difference of two squares. We know that from a square minus b square equals to a plus b, a minus b, uh, then we can say that uh, p, we can say that p plus 1, or I can say 1 plus p, 1 minus p is 1 square minus p square because it is 1 minus p square. So I'm going to say it is 4 now in the bracket. 1 minus p square equals to 3. You are going to divide it by 4, both sides. So now we are getting 1 minus p square equals to 3 over 4. 
So P square will be one minus three over four. P square will be one over four. We are going to take under root both sides, of course. So it means P will be plus or minus square root of one over four, which is plus or minus one over two. So the value of P is plus or minus one over two. That is all. Question number six, if the slope of the straight line through the point seven comma four and negative two comma K is one, find the value of K. Wow, good. So what to remember uh, from definition of a slope, we know that slope, uh, slope, call it M, is always change in Y over change in X. We know that slope is change in Y over change in X. So I can term actually seven uh, now, let X1, Y1 uh, be, you know, be seven comma four and X2, Y2, uh, let it be uh, negative two comma k okay so now the slope m will be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and we were told that our slope was one so one equals to y2 uh, y2 which is make so four minus uh, y1, oh, I'm sorry, it is k minus four over negative two minus seven. So we're going to solve this equation. I'm going to extend it a little bit this way. So here we have uh, actually one times negative nine equals to K minus four because negative two minus seven, it is negative nine times one, it is negative nine. So negative nine equals to K minus four. K, it is negative nine plus four. The value of K is negative five. So we're supposed to find the value of K. And so the value of K, uh, dear friends, the value of K is negative five. Next question, that is 60B. By using a sketch, find the image of point uh, five comma two and a reflection in the line Y equals to zero, followed by another reflection in the line Y equals to X. So, by using a sketch, we are going to use a sketch. There we go. By assumption five, uh, maybe this is five and this is two. So five comma two, it is there, A uh, five comma two. What we are going to do, we are going to find the image of this, uh, and our mirror is y equals to zero. So the line y equals to zero uh, is this one here. Line y equals to zero is x axis, okay? This is our mirror y equals to zero. So if this is the mirror, dear friends, uh, it means now the image will be five, comma negative two. So that is a dash. So the next stage, how are you going to find, we are going to find now the image of five comma negative two and our mirror now is the line. I can do it in the same diagram. Our mirror now is line y, y equals to x. Actually, the feature of this one here, 
we're just changing x and y otherwise uh, so the sign of these numbers are not changing so actually the result will be negative uh, will be negative 2 comma 5 so it means the image will be there negative 2 comma 5 probably 5 will be somewhere there so that is a dash dash it is negative 2 comma 5 okay so actually we moved it from uh, this point to that point so by the way we are supposed to find the image so you have seen the first image is 5 comma negative 2 the second image is negative 2 comma 5 I think it is clear. Uh, next question 7a. Use laws of exponents to simplify. Mm, okay. Actually, the law we are going to use here, you remember when you were taught uh, about exponents, you are taught that if you have a power n, again, power a, sorry, power m, this is a power n times m, okay? So now we are going to say that 2r power 3 square over 2r power 3. This is 2 square times r power 6 divided by 2 power 3 times r power 3. So you simplify you have 2 power 2 minus 3 times r power 6 minus 3. So you have 2 power negative 1 times r power 3. So the result actually is r power 3 over 2. Clear? Clear. Next one. If log 2 equals to 0 0.301210, log 3 given this one here, and log 7 given that one, find log 47, 42. So log 42, what we're going to do here, we are going to uh, express 42 uh, in terms of uh, 2, 3, and 7. So we can say that log 42 actually is log 2 times 3 times 7. And we know that this one here is going to be equal to log 2 plus log 3 plus log 7. And because we were given already, so I'm going to take this one equals to 0 0.3010 plus uh, 0 0.4771 plus 0 0.8451. So you just add these numbers, 0 0.3010 plus 0 0.4771 plus 0 0.8541, and the result is 1.6322. Okay, that is value of log 42. Next question. Uh, next question. Next question, as you can see, it, it is question number eight. Oh, we are going very fast, and I hope we are going to finish uh, just as quickly as possible. Question number eight. So question number eight, we were given a rectangle. We are given a rectangle A, B, C, D is similar to rectangle W, X, Y, Z. If B, C is nine, A, B, four, uh, and to W, X, five, calculate the length of X, Y. So if these two, these two rectangles are similar, rectangle one and two are similar, it means the ratio of their corresponding sides are equal. So we are going to say that AB over WX 
uh, equals to BC over XY, okay? AB over WX equals to BC over XY. And we know that AB is 4 over WX, which is 5, equals to BC, which is 9 over XY, meaning that XY, dear friends, would be equal to 9 times 5 divided by 4. So XY is 45 over 4, and 45 we divide by 4, of course, you're going to divide there, very simple, you get 11. Uh, so XY is 11.25 centimeter. We are done with that. We go to next question. Uh, the figure below shows that AC equals to BD. Prove that ACB angle ACB is equal to ADB. ADB. Okay. So this kind of uh, questions actually here. Uh, first of all, we are going to prove. We have to prove that two triangles are congruent. So first of all, prove that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle uh, ABC. And now we are going to start. Of course, AB, it is common side. And we are given BD is equal to AC. So this is given. And So AC equals to BD. Uh, okay, so far already we have seen it. And BD is common. And actually from uh, this diagram, we can see that this angle here and this angle here seems to be right angles. So uh, even though it is not uh, stated actually in the in the diagram mm, it is not stated so actually uh, I'm cancelling now the solution because we're not going to do those triangles there is no need to guess but so what we are going to do we are going to uh, prove I'm going to put here x we are going to prove first that triangle bxd bxd is congruent to triangle uh, AXC. I think that will be the easiest one. So from there, we know that we were given BD is equal to AC. So this is given. And Now, in these two triangles, as you can see, this angle is going to be equal to that angle. That is second side. Mm -hmm. Then what is next? I think we have a problem here, dear uh, friends. So, uh, as far as we can see in the diagram, let us think. Let us think together. How are we going to prove that uh, ACB, AC, ACB is equal to ADB, ADB? I think these three, two triangles, as you can see here, it is 90 angle and here it's 90, it's, it is 90 degree. So uh, the right approach again, we are going to go back to the same approach. Now we are going to prove that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle uh, ABC. ABC. So here is the proof. 
first of all, of course, we know that BA, this is common side. And we were given that BD is equal to AC. So this is given case. And we can see that ABD, angle ABD, ABD is equal to BAC. BAC, it is right angle, of course. So you see, we have side angle side. So we are going to say that actually, therefore, triangle ABD is congruent to triangle ABC by side angle side. Hence, corresponding angles, one of the corresponding angles, which is ACB, is equal to ADB. It is shown. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, this is going to be, uh, we have uh, two questions actually to go. So we are going to finish uh, the whole paper in one session. Uh, I, I thought at the beginning that probably we we are not going to be in position to finish all the questions, but okay. Now, let us continue now with the next question. So in the question, a ladder on the ground leans against a vertical wall whose height is five meters. The ground distance between the ladder and the wall is 12 meters. Find, draw a diagram to represent the information first. So here we go, dear friends. Uh, we are going to draw the diagram. So we have a ladder on the ground leans against a vertical wall. So this is our vertical wall. And we have a ladder. So this is the ladder. So the height is five meters. The, dis the ground distance between the ladder and the wall is 12 meters. So here is 12 meters. By using the diagram, find the length of the ladder. So this is L. Again, we are going to use Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to say that L square equals to AB equals to a square plus b square, meaning that l square equals to 12 square plus 5 square. l square, it is 144 plus 25. l square is 140, uh, sorry, 169, uh, meaning that l equals to square root of 169. We get actually l equals to 13. Uh, meters. So the length of the ladder is 13 meters. The length of the ladder is 13 meters. Uh, question number nine uh, B, given that sine A is 3 over 5, so we were given that sine A is 3 over 5, okay? And A is an acute angle. Find without using mathematical table the value of cos A. So we are going to draw a triangle. So this is our triangle, right angle. So this is angle A. So sine A is 3 over 5. Opposites, 
over hypotenuse. Let us find this side here, x. So we know that 5 square is x square plus 3 square. So I can say x square is 5 square minus 3 square. x square equals to 16. x equals to 4. Okay? So here is 4. So let us find the value of cos A from the triangle cos A is uh, actually adjacent side of a hypotenuse, which is 4 over 5. Tan A, it is opposite of a uh, adjacent side, so 3 over 4. And 1 minus sine A, 1 minus sine A over 1 minus cos A, 1 minus cos A, this is equal to 1 minus sine A, it is 3 over 5, of course, divided by 1 minus uh, 3, 4 over 5. The result is equal to 2 over 5 divided by 1 over 5. The result is 2, of course equals to 2. So the final answer is 2. So you have seen that uh, 31, 32, and 33, that is the solution. The last question, in a class of 32 students, 18 play golf, 16 play piano, and 7 uh, plays both golf and piano. Use, uh, use a formula to find the number of students who play uh, who play neither golf nor piano or foot. So we are supposed to use formulas. So in a class of 32 students, 18 play golf. I can say number of those who play golf is 18. Number of those who play piano is 16 and seven play both so number of those who play both golf and piano is seven so actually by using the formula we can get number of those who play both piano who, who play piano or golf and later on it will be now possible to get those who play neither of the game so number of those who play piano or golf is equal to number of those who play golf plus number of those who play piano minus number of those who play piano both piano and golf so this one equals to 18 plus 16 minus 7 uh, if you do operation there 18 plus 16 you're going to get uh, 34 34 minus 7 you get 27 so those who play neither uh, neither piano no golf number of those number of those who neither play piano or golf you are going to take total number of students and here we are talking of 32 students so it means you are going to take 32 minus 27 equals to five uh, students okay five students uh, the last question, uh, with the last part of the last equation, we can say we are going to see uh, the pie chart. So we are going to the last equation. Survey was done among students of certain school. So they're talking of a survey
surveying done by students of certain schools in order to find the most popular subject in this, uh, in order to find the most popular subject in the survey, which is student voted once and that were as follows. So mathematics, English, biology, history, geography, and physics. Show this information in a pie chart. So to show these informations in pie chart, actually what you have, we have to do first, we have to find the number of pupils, total, total number of pupils. We're going to take 50 plus 80 plus 120 plus 40 plus 80 plus 30 equals 2. So we take 50 plus 80 plus 120 plus 40 plus 80 plus 30. You get 400. So those uh, whose uh, from this information now, we are going to take a degree corresponding to mathematics. I'm going to take uh, degrees corresponding to the first case, mathematics. Uh, we're going to say equals to 50 over 400 times 360. 50 over 400 times 360, 500 zero, 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 zero. <coughs> is 41. It is 9. We are going to get 45 degrees. <coughs> that is for mathematics. English 80, so for English uh, equals to 80 over 400 times 360, so two zeros goes like that, here you have nine, again you're going to get uh, 72 degrees, then you go to biology 120, biology is 120 over 400 times 360. You simplify 0, 0, 0, 0 goes. You have 4, 1, here it is 9. 9 times here you get 108 degrees. Then which subject? Uh, history 40. So history equals to 40 degree over 400. Sorry, it is 40 times, uh, 40 over 400 times 360. You simplify 0, 0, 0. You are getting 36 degrees. Then next one, you have 80. That is geography, of course. So geography. will be 80 over 400 times 360, uh, 0, 0, 0, goes. I call here 1, it is 9. Again, you're going to get 72 degrees. And the last one is physics, 30. So physics. We're going to take 30 over... 400 times 360, you simplify 0, 0 goes, 0, it is 9, so it is 27 degrees, okay? So now the next stage actually is to sketch 
uh, you are going to sketch a pie chart. You are going to sketch a pie chart. So this is our center. This is our center. So you have mathematics 45 degree, biology, for example, biology 108. Maybe this is, uh, let me start with geography, 72 degrees. Then you have 108. You have to use proper scale, of course. Then you have 45 degrees. Then you have 36 degrees. Then you have 72 again. Then you have 27. So 108 plus 72 plus 27. Plus 72 again, plus 36, plus 45, get to 360. So mathematics 45. So this is mathematics. English 72. English. Biology 108. Uh, history 36. Then geography 72. Geography and physics C, uh, 27. So this is how you are supposed to actually to present informations uh, in a pie chart. And that was solutions uh, to NECTA 2018 uh, students. If you have any question uh, regarding the way we stopped with these questions, you can share your feedback with us. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel uh, we are doing this so that actually uh, many students are going to benefit from these videos. Thank you very much, and I wish you all the best in your studies.